Why on Thra is there a blue Uru and a striped Skeksis? Seems like that wanders from the original. What a heresy. And what does Netflix Age of Resistance have to do with the test footage that Jim Henson shot in his yard in 1978? Is someone on drugs? That is what we'll be discussing on today's episode of The Dark Crystal Conjunction. Howdy all and welcome to The Dark Crystal Conjunction, your YouTube dream space to nerd out about all things The Dark Crystal. Pardon that silly opening, but one thing that I love about the new Age of Resistance series from Netflix is seeing how much they went back to concept art and prototype puppets and put those original visions back into the new show nearly 40 years later. One video wouldn't suffice to show them all. I've been clipping some of these and putting them on Twitter. But upon rewatches, you'll just find more and more and more. But one big one that I do want to highlight also covers a Fathom Event trivia slide, which was the first series that we featured on this channel. So I thought I'd get back to completing that series. Plus, this answers a question I see sometimes as to why there is a blue Uru and a striped Skeksis, seemingly anomalies amongst their kinds. I'm of course talking about Skekgra the Conqueror, Turned Heretic, and his counterpart, Ergo the Wanderer. We don't really have an in-universe answer, unless it has something to do with those psychoactive berries they were taking, uh, but more on that later. But we have an earthly one. These character designs go back to early sketches and the earliest prototype puppets. Skekgra's look comes from an early Brian Frow design of the Skeksis, which were first published in 1982. But we can see in the making of official timeline that they show it next to test footage from 1978, so I'm not exactly sure when these sketches were actually made, but there it is. This brings us back to another trivia slide that we got from last year's Dark Crystal Fathom event. The slide simply reads, quote, The first test footage shot for the Dark Crystal was done in Jim Henson's yard in Bedford, New York. End quote. This took place after the timeline of the previous trivia videos we've looked at regarding the original story outline, the Mithra treatment, the crystal, etc. So this brings us back again to 1978 where, according to Henson's Red Book, quote, much of that year was spent creating prototype characters, testing them on camera, and creating a document to pitch the film to potential backers." End quote. That was of course the pitch booklet, The Crystal, which, again, we described in our previous video and took a deep dive and basically read that whole pitch booklet. And we also noted how that pitch booklet wasn't so much selling the movie based on the plot and the story, but on the artistic vision and exotic characters. So let's look now at that earliest test footage shot on October 17th, 1978 in Bedford, New York, which comes from the Jim Henson Company's YouTube channel. Then we'll look at some test photos from that shoot that were affixed to that pitch booklet. These photos coming from Casting Gaines, Dark Crystal, The Ultimate Visual History, and Jim Henson's Red Book. And as I show these, since there's no sound or anything to this test footage, I'll be reading an excerpt from The Ultimate Visual History. It would be another four and a half years of continuous work until we saw our dreams on the big screen and certain story elements changed during those years, Brian Froud said. But the concept booklet set out our film with sepia-toned line drawings and a simple statement of our tell. While the booklet broadly illustrated Henson and Froud's dual vision for the crystal, they both knew that investors and studio executives would likely have questions that the booklet wouldn't answer, so they would need a more developed plot before the movie was ready to be pitched. In addition, Although the screen test had demonstrated that the all-creature concept could work, there were many more characters left to create before the crystal could be shopped around. Perhaps most important of all, the designers were still searching for a way to deviate from the soft and spongy look of the Muppets. Fortunately, the answer would soon present itself in a galaxy far, far away." End quote. That however is another story for another time.
One more little behind the scenes on Ergo, the Wonder, and Skekgra the Heretic comes from an io9 Gizmodo article titled, A Spoiler-Filled Chat with Dark Crystal Age of Resistance Creators. From September 3rd, 2019, io9 asks, One of the biggest surprises of the season was the Heretic, who was not only helping our heroes along their entire journey, but had also reunited with his mystic half, the Wanderer. What made you decide to bring those two characters together? Jeff Addis, co-creator, quotes, we had this idea that, at some point, our heroes needed to go somewhere and learn this information, the true history of Thra. Because the lead characters don't know that these Skeksis are half, right? And so, who better to do that than a Skeksis? But why would a Skeksis help them? And so we started playing around this idea of a heretic. And there is nothing more heretical to us than the idea of a Skeksis and a mystic who wanted to be one again. Because that was the foundation of everything the Skeksis fought against. And so it would make sense that, if we're going to the opposite for heresy, it would be two characters who wanted to be joined again. The Heretic and the Wanderer were based on fear and loathing in Las Vegas. We had a strong image of these two. They're trying to look into the future, but they're not tapped into Thra. So the way they do it is by doing a large amount of drugs. So we thought of them as very much fear and loathing in Las Vegas, except one was on uppers and the other was on downers." End quote. That drug was the berries we see in the room at the Circle of the Suns. Are you hungry? Mm -hmm. Ooh. Mm. <gasps> Wait, don't eat that! But berries are food. They're not. Huh. They're erdrubes. Mm -hmm. They're like medicine. Deuce and shamans use them to speak with Thra and glimpse into the future. The two seemingly consumed those Urdrup berries and through their tripping had premonitions, or as Tides of the Dark Crystal puts it, far dreams. This revealed to them the role of the Gelfling in toppling the Skeksis, hence what we saw in their puppet show. But there is hope, for we have glimpsed into the future and seen our fate lies in the hands of the Gelfling. Well, there you have it. Rather than them being strange, well, I mean, they are still strange. It actually harkens back to the first test shoot of the Dark Crystal, as well as some of the earliest Frau designs for the Skeksis. Very cool. The folks involved in the Netflix show have paid such respect to this franchise. It continually blows me away. This is one reason I continue to, and hope you continue to join me in exploring Thra.